I just look back and my little boy, I can see a car headed right inside the van. And it was the most terrific moment of my life. And it stopped. There's broken car pieces and glass everywhere, and there's smoke coming from the engine, and people running hysterically around the car. And then I heard my little boy say, Daddy, are we going to be late for hockey? <laughs> <laughs> and it was when I realized he was all right that I became the happiest place, the happiest man on earth. And inside that smashed up car became the happiest place on earth. Forget about Disney World, okay? It's where we are up here mentally and not where we are physically. And it was then that I realized that there's no guarantee of tomorrow. Tomorrow never really comes, right? We're always living in today. And if there's things that we want to do, the, the time is now to start attacking them. Okay, the time is now to put our heads down, to work hard, and to take the market. And as I looked into the, the course of contacts and, and, the, and talked to Roger about it, I realized there's a lot of similarities between what this company is going through okay, right now as it's taking the market, as it continues to take the market. Small Vancouver-based company you know, takes on the world. And a lot of parallels between when I was just this kid okay, who was going to the smallest football playing school in Canada and wanted to make it to the NFL. And there's a lot of techniques and a lot of theories that I learned along the way. And I'm gonna give those to you guys give those to you guys in the next 45 minutes. Okay, these these theories me, after all the effort my big brother put in, it was not just a big game. Okay? It was a time to show my big brother that the, the effort he had put into it was gonna pay off. That someday, you know, I could play in a big game today, and someday I could live this and make this happen. Okay? It's October 30th. October 30th, 1985, my very first big game. Okay, it's down in my, my stance waiting for opening kickoff. You know, the cheerleaders are cheering, you can smell hot dogs, and the fans are screaming. I used to look over and wave at my brother before the game, and I meant everything was cool. I wasn't there, it didn't matter. He'd probably off talking to the cheerleaders or something. I catch up with him later. Okay? So they kicked the ball off. We got we marched it down. We scored on our very first drive, okay? Fantastic, things are going my way. They get the ball, they march it back, and they score. It didn't happen like that all game long. Okay, we battled hard, tooth and nail. We fought first half, second half, and my first big game, guys. Yeah, we lost. And as a young person, I had never experienced that kind of loss. I mean, it, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but as a young person who had so much in it, it really hurt me badly. And I, I walk off the field, and I, I walk back to the change room and I get in my spot and my head is spinning. I sit down in my seat and somebody yells, Mark, your Uncle Chuck is in the hallway. You have to go talk to him now. I hadn't seen my Uncle Chuck in like six months. And uh, I mean, he'd never been to any of my sports stuff. So I walk out of the hallway. Standing there. He walks over to me. By the arm. He says, Mark, I'm sorry, but your big brother Bill died today. See ya. My big brother was born with a hole in his heart. And from a very young age, the doctors told him that any day could be his last day, but he never let that stop him. He never let that get in his way. He put his, he put his head down every day, and he just kept working. He set a great example for his little brother. I mean, he took every day like it might be his last, okay? And on that day, October 30th, I made a promise to my big brother. I made a promise that the dream that we had set together, the goal we had set together, I would never stop trying to achieve it, okay? I made a promise. I could have easily just given up right then and there, right? I could have just said, okay, well, that's, you know, a roadblock. I don't think I could even make this promise. Who, did, who was I to think I could do this? And I got so angry. Okay? I got so angry, I just wanted to hit something. So I stormed out of the room, and I went back to my apartment, and, and, and I sat down in a spot, okay? and I went through all kinds of emotions. I got so, so sad. I just started to cry, and I back to angry. I wanted to hit something, and then something happened. Something that I couldn't really explain. Sitting beside me on a little table was a picture of myself playing football that year. That's it. I can explain that. I put pictures of me everywhere. <laughs> it's true. I, it's true. <laughs> I couldn't explain. Was underneath that picture was a Sports Illustrated magazine I'd never seen before. Okay, and I picked them both up, and I looked at Sports Illustrated magazine. On the cover of it was NFL football players who played the same position as me. 
And I looked at one, I looked at the other, and I put them together, and then I realized that there's no reason that that human being can do that and I can't. Okay, there's no reason why I can't achieve that, what that person has done. Okay, I just have to find out exactly how. And I start asking people, you know what? Because I had discovered that it's not really the person, it's the process, right? You find ways to achieve things. You set your goals, you attack them, you reach them, and then you reach a new goal. You keep going. Okay, I found that process, that, that the process is what makes it happen, what fuels it, okay? We've reached, we've reached a, a goal here, and we want to reach more. We want to keep going. We've got to keep driving. Okay, set new goals. Keep going. Keep attacking. And that's what means fantastic. Okay, I get to the preseason games. I played every snap of every game, the whole preseason. They announced the final roster guys, and I got cut. I get knocked down one more time. I get knocked down one more time, right? I remember what the man said to me. He goes, Mark, thanks for trying out, but you can go home. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I thought it was funny too. Every <laughs> day. Yeah, I thought that was funny because I no longer had a home. You know, I just left university. I had to go live on my mother's green couch. Yeah, funny. I hated that. You know, I had to share that couch with a wiener dog named Fritzy. <laughs> And I hated Fritz. <laughs> okay? If the motivation is anywhere and everywhere, I wanted off that couch. I kept going, okay? I kept working out, and one day I get back from the gym, three days later, and I get a message on my answering machine. And this time it's from the Miami Dolphins. And the message says, Mark, we've been watching you since day one in Detroit. We really like what we see. We want you to come down here, and do a workout for the team, and to be on the team. The day was October 30th, 1995. It was 10 years to the day. 10 years to the day that my big brother Bill died. 10 years to the day that I made that promise. And I was sitting there in Miami Dolphins practice facility and just done my workout. This familiar looking guy walks in the room. He walks over to me and gives me his hand. He goes, Hi, Mark. I'm Dan Marino. Welcome to the Miami Dolphins. I did it. I did it. That day, I had done what nobody had ever done before. Okay, I had gone from the smallest football playing school in Canada to playing for the NFL. Okay, just like Coastal Contacts back in the 90s was one of hundreds of online contact retailers to now being the largest online retailer, okay, I had done it through resiliency, through getting up one more time that I was knocked down by making a promise, by taking a roadblock and making it my motivator. Okay? By making it my, my motivator. And as you guys attack the market from here on in, okay, you're going to do the similar sort of thing, right? You're going to get roadblocks, and you're going to find a way to twist them around and make them your motivators. You're going to just keep going. People say you can't do it, well, you can. Right? But it's going to take more than resiliency. It's going to take leadership. Okay? And it's going to take leadership in this room, and it's going to take leadership out there. It's going to take leadership everywhere. All right. okay? In sports, there's an adage that Champions are made by working hard when no one's looking. But you know what? That's true. You've got to work hard when no one's looking, right? That's just the way it is. But if you can also do it when someone's looking, <laughs> you might as well, right? So that's what I was going to do. I was going to go out there and jog around the field with Don Chula pulled up. And I remember the look on his eyes as the, as the Florida sun was rising that morning. And he looked, and it's like he'd never seen anything like that before. Here's this guy that he, you know he just signed and he's running around the field, you know. And he made me stop and he gave me a nice smile and a wave and he went on in. And I did that every single day. And as the days and the weeks went by, other people on the team, these legends, started joining my little pre-dawn job. <laughs> <laughs> my personal stuff. So I go into the practice facility, the Miami Dolphins practice facility, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Beautiful, brand new facility. As I walked in the front doors, there's this beautiful set of stairs, okay, about 50 stairs leading up to the, the front office where the general managers are and stuff. And, and about halfway up these stairs, on either side of the stairs, is a Super Bowl trophy, okay, well lit up Super Bowl trophy, just beautiful, one for each of the Super Bowls they'd won. As I walk in, I look up one last time, and top, a meeting room opens. Nobody's supposed to be here. And I watch the walks the general manager, the player personnel guys, some of the coaches. And the last guy through, Don Chico, he's got a clipboard and his glasses down on his nose. And I see him. He gives me a wave, and I wave back, and he goes, like that. He calls me up. So I start walking up. 
he starts walking down, and I meet him about half fight. Here's Don Shula, two Super Bowl trophies, and I'm like, how did I get here? <laughs> And he goes, Mark, you know, we're sorry we can't keep you on the team. I'm like, yeah, me too. I was really loving it here, coach, and everything. I want to thank you for everything. And uh, I just want to know, why are you guys all here? Such important guys on the day off. And he goes, Mark, you're trying to keep you on the team. Before I get thinking what to say next, I just say, what? <laughs> and he goes, Mark, we need you here for your leadership. You see, you don't have to be a captain, a quarterback, a coach, a CEO, a manager, anything to be a leader. You just have to be willing to go out and work as hard as you possibly can when nobody's watching and when everybody's watching. And you've got to put your head down, and it's contagious. The more you do it, the more others do it. Okay, and it's incredible. I've never done before in here at Coastal Contacts. You're very fortunate because you have a corporate culture of being encouraged to take risks when you don't know the outcome, right? And can you imagine? In 1995, when I was going from, from Bishop's University, one day I'm on the practice facility at the smallest Canadian football school in Canada, and the, the toughest, meanest guy I'm going against is 6'2", 230 pounds, and works at the ESO when he's not playing football. <laughs> so the next day, going playing against you know NFL football players, 6'9", 310 pounds, who have been in prison most of their lives. <laughs> That's funny, but true. Uh, <laughs> but can you imagine? I had no idea. If I could even do this, how am I going to do it? I, this is practice facility here to, oh my goodness, over here. But I had to do it, right? That, that's what I got myself into. This is what I wanted. Okay? That's for sure. So he says to me, Mark, you've been playing football a long time. Rely on your training, number one. Rely on your training. Number two, attack everything with confidence. And number three, if this doesn't work, you can always sell cars. <laughs> it doesn't work. You find out what went wrong, and you keep trying. Right? Over his line. Our Porsche is doing that thing where you, where you rearrange yourself in line so you go against somebody in particular over here. Who do you think he wanted to go against? He wanted to go against me. That's right. He wanted to break me to pieces, make me look foolish, make himself look great in front of those thousands of people, in front of those TV cameras. And I saw that on day one. What did I do? Well, I knew. I just do the little things that my coaches have been telling me, relied on my training, because I've all been training really well. I relied on my training, okay, and, and I attacked it with confidence. Now, athletes have a special technique, and I guarantee you, every successful athlete, and every, you guys all obviously watch the Olympics 2010 right here in Vancouver, everyone who stood atop that podium practices this, this stuff, and it's called positive self-talk. In fact, Maya Ricker, after she won her gold medal, okay, she just finished, microphone goes in her face, what were you thinking up there before you did it? I was going over my positive self-talk. She said those exact words. Okay, that's what leads us to be successful when we're unsure of what is about to happen. Okay, we tell ourselves we can do it. Sounds easy? It is. <laughs> it is. Okay, some people call it inner arrogance. We all know arrogance, right? People walk around telling everybody how good they are at things. Try using those same words in your head when it works like magic. Okay, I saw Robert Porsche rearrange himself. Instantly, I told myself, you know what? I was the number one pick in the NFL, obviously not true. I was, I was in the cover of Sports Illustrated. I told myself that those thousands of people in those TV cameras, I told myself they were there to see me. <coughs> My goodness, I felt fantastic all of a sudden. I had his confidence. Okay, big dude from the southern United States. Walks up to the line of scrimmage first, gets down in his stance, gives me a little smile, and he says, Sorry about this, boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> he from Canada, I'm like, that's okay. <laughs> Snap the ball, what happens? Did he destroy me, break me to pieces? No. I got inside on him. I marched him over to the sidelines and I threw him into that group of TV cameras. That's a true story. I did that. Yes. Yes, I did that. I did that. He's arranging himself again. Why? Does not want to go against me. I was in his head. The mind is a very powerful tool. Okay, tell yourself you're the best. It works, okay? Attack with confidence. Rely on your training. And my challenge to every single one of you in this room is we attack the market from here on in, okay? Is, is, is lead when no one's watching. Lead when everyone is watching, okay? Attack everything with confidence and get up one more time than we're knocked down, okay? Persevere. We can do this. And the time to take the market, my friends, the time is now. Thank you very much. <laughs>